Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. This is Gat Puno Abond, Garemot Bayet. Ah. <clears throat> Welcome to my uh, a mile walk and a mile talk. Okay, so um, today's topic. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, different things today. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, Moro Moro. Okay, the uh, show that uh, everybody is uh, talking about. But okay, Larong Moro Moro is also known as Comedia, Duplo, or Sarsuela. Okay, that's what the name. Uh, that's very famous in the Philippines. And this was originally known as Doce Pares de Francia, which is um, introduced to the Philippines uh, way back on 1610 or 1637, to be exact, <clears throat> uh, through uh, Manila, Acapulco, Galleon. Okay, so the show was introduced, but the martial art is not introduced until later. 1637, they reached the Manila and was adapted in Manila and go out. It's probably, you know, um, not until 16, you know, 1650, 1670 that reached uh, Laguna, you know, but which if you if you really look back, Laguna is not far from Manila. Paete, <clears throat> which I came from, is about two hours drive from Manila, and the boundary of Manila is actually Rizal, and then at the time we called Morong, yeah. Uh -huh. So those is the boundary before you can reach uh, uh, Laguna yeah, but at that time there's no really boundary they boundary that because they keep moving the boundaries of uh, each town anyway so anyway uh, forget about the demographic uh, let's let's go right away on the Moro Moro okay um, so to my knowledge uh, Paete has been uh, showcasing Moro Moro since the late uh, 1600 to early 1700. That's the record, okay? And there's so many Paeteño. <clears throat> Seems like carry this art and bring it to the other town, like the Pascual uh, family in uh, Rizal, you know, and uh, many more. It's like my family. Uh, brought it anywhere else. It's like uh, one one of uh, intriguing is my great uh, grandfather uh, Lino uh, was named. You know, actually it was nicknamed after the Visayan Island. That's why they call Lino Visaya Island. You know, but we're at Visayan. I I have to put that in and. Specifically, my great grandfather during the uh, Katipunan, you know, when he was uh, traveling by the Katipunan, he uh, actually went to Cebu. In fact, you know, my family from uh, Lu uh, San Pablo Laguna, the Baet family of San Pablo Laguna, is all uh, came from Visayan Island and then they come to Laguna searching for my great grandfather. And then they settled in uh, San Pablo. That's how the story of that buy it. Uh, anyway, uh, there's more more to it. I'm not gonna go detail because uh, I don't want anybody to raise eyebrow, right? Because that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about training in Larong Moro Moro, okay? Not the history of my family because that's raising eyebrow to a lot of uh, people that understand you know you have to be connected to us to to be proud of it if it's not then you are just one of those raising I, I, eyebrow right if there's no record then it must be 
fabricated and it's not true. It's fine. You know, it's fine. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not, I cannot produce record for, to prove them wrong or right. Now what we can do is talk about more, 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 because nobody win in, in the history. We can only talk about it, but nobody win because everybody has their own opinion about history. Anyway, Larong Moro Moro, it's uh, really uh, the hidden, uh, the place where they hide, or they pub, let's put it this way, uh, formulated. Oh, you can also say fabricate, okay? The Filipino uh, fighting arts. You know, the original fighting art is was not uh, look like what it was. It, it was changed after the Spanish, you know, uh, adaptation. We adapt, the Filipino adapted the Larong Moro Moro Battalions, okay? Uh, which uh, up to this day, you can still see some of those battalions, the Danza de los Doce Pares, is, exists in Mexico exists in um, Acapulco area, you know, because that's what the history came from. Anyway, but that's not Filipino martial art. I want to make sure, I want to make sure it's that. The Filipino martial art is started in the Philippines, of course. You know, at the time, it's not really martial art because it's never used by the well, all, all fighting arts now is called martial arts. So let's call it that way because I don't want to be politically uh, wrong or correct. <laughs> I'm just talking about Filipino fighting arts. Larong Moro Moro. The Arnis de Mano that was born in Larong Moro Moro, all the battalions. So that's what our topic, right? Larong Moro Moro is consists of 30 dances, which is uh, from the beginning to end is really teaching a good a variety of combination from the very basic to the advanced, to the medium range to largo or medium range largo corto. It means long um, mid range and close range, that's what it is, right? And uh, one to 10 of those, the very basic is those, <clears throat> is the particular orders. And then five of them, you know, on the very basic is five of them is the basic uh, corto uh, mano, which is close range fight. And then one to five, Again, from 16 to 20 is concentration of Largo. Of course, at the end, they still have the corto in it, but they're really teaching the Largo aspect of the uh, Arnis de Mano. All right, so I'll break it down too easy. I wanna make sure that uh, uh, those of you that not familiar with more more all along <clears throat> Moro Moro, you know, the arts called batalia, so it means uh, combat dances. Use of sword or without sword. Yeah, use of many weapons. Uh, sometimes, you know, they use uh, spear, depend on the, the story was uh, called, or nade, double sword, single, uh, single sword and uh, sp a shield, you know, those kind of thing, and uh, cape and sword, knife and cape, and uh, spade daga. Those is kind of, all of those is evolved on that uh, show. All right, so, but you're gonna go back, uh, Battalia 1, 2, 3, number one, Battalia Isa, Bilang Isa, and Battalia Tatlo is the abacada of the abacada of uh, of uh, Larong Moro Moro or the Batalia. They start on three different uh, opening. Consists of five different angle of strike. Yeah, 
It means the original Cinco Terras that Luzon has been practiced for hundreds of hundreds of years. All right, so that's what that's what come up to. Huh? So this is the original uh, theory, is five Cinco Terras. That was hidden into the Batalla. That's why the the Batalla Isa, or num, uh, the Batalla Isa, or the battle one, is only um, five numbers on the purse uh, inside. And then as soon as you walk into the person, is also pipe strike. It consists of 10. All right, so from Largo or from Medio, you know, from the long range to Medio is pipe strike. And then they go close in. And as soon as they go close in, it's another pipe strike. That's what the Patalia is size. Huh? And in between, the movement uh, that uh, really um, make it more unique is the way the way the 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 player cross its other foot without getting cut, and that's what they call bridge, bridge, you know, bridging the gap, huh? And that's what it is, you know, uh, from long range to close range. That's what the gap is. That's what the the bridge is, and they call that to lie, but it's not uh, separate. It's together with the whole show. And then there's um, part of the show that uh, everybody calls is uh, pre-shadow, or fight, or carenza. To us in our language, we call this pamamaltasia. It means you are uh, demonstrating a movement of combat, you know, that has to be analyzed by the other uh, opponent, you know. So that's how you guys uh, understand that, okay, uh, we are on Batalia Isa or Batalia Dalawa. And before they even, uh, if this is uh, on the street or uh, what they call is in pronto, when they do Batalia, they have a sign language, which is uh, adapted by the Paete uh, Laguna uh, Scrimador or Arnisador in the uh, street uh, battalions, you know? And this uh, very, uh, very much alive to all of the Scrimador in Laguna. They start doing those sim, you know, dance-like movement. They could be slow or super fast or fast or super slow. <laughs> you know, depend on how you interpret you know, your breathing, yeah, and your skill, that's how it is. So, when they teach the one, two, three, or the battalia isa, or the battalia number one and number three, they uh, teach uh, the opening of the strike, yeah, the opening of the strike, or, you know, number one, we start in right hand uh, forward strike number two start with the right but backhand strike and number three is but it's high strike yeah everything is high right on the high high number this is number one this is number two and number three is low and also introducing repetitive strike already you know repetitive strike it means Multiple strike in the same location. That's what repetitive is, right? Repetition, okay? So, uh, because number one is they strike all the pipe in different location. Number two, they strike uh, to the other side and go back to one. Yeah, and then do it again the same way as thing. Uh, number three, they strike low and then they double the number two. That's kind of, uh, you know, uh, the opening. So, very, very straightforward, you know. And then, on number four, five, six, 
seven, uh, impact, number four, five, six, seven. They introduce, or they, uh, they uh, showcase a similar block, you know, a similar block. In fact, it's uh, number four and number six is look alike. The only difference is number one, six is one block and one strike, one block, or block and strike. The number six is two block, you know, right in the same location though, head, you know, hit, block, hit, block, and that's what it is. And then number five, they put in between, number five is they, cap, they took one and two to number one, you know, high, low, and then they do the number four, and that's become number five, and then go, go back to one, yeah. So it's very easy, but the opening chains, yeah. And then on number seven, it's similar to number five, but the block chains, instead of blocking the head, they're blocking the uh, sideline or the angle going to your neck because the strike is changed a little bit to uh, diag uh, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, diagonal strike than uh, vertica vertical, yeah? It's not downward, the strike is almost sideward, sideward downward, you know, that's what, that's what has become the, the uh, block, yeah? So, that is number seven, and number eight is eight. They teaching how to block side to side. If the person attack you on side to side banner, and that's they introduce the block and the strike. Okay, and number nine, this is the time that they combine the number uh, four strike or number seven strike. You know, number seven block and uh, number five or number four block. It means shoulder, 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 you know, the, the block to co cover this neck and then the head. That's what it is, combination. And then on, on uh, number 10, they add footworks in it. They add the rushing footwork or sagasa. It means they're really pressuring your opponent, your, the opponent, you know, with the strike like, like number five half of the number two and then they do the number eight and number four that's kind of a combination there and all of those is designed <clears throat> to train our opponent or to train our partner to react to those kind of attempt of your uh, fight you know opponent which is pretty good you know because uh, if somebody's running toward you you know exactly how to step back rather than uh, stepping straight line, you're stepping off line side to make sure that you are, you know, you're not out balance and you stay on course. Anyway, and then you have the 11 to 15, which is uh, designed for close range. On the 11, you still combination of Learning the high, high strike and low, low strike, or high, low strike and low, stri and low, low, high strike. Those is the combination. High, low, and then low, high. Those is our 11. And then they try to emphasize uh, two thrusts, uh, thrust low and thrust, thrust high also. Okay, high, low, low, high thrust, that's what it is. So again, the same way, the footwork is like number 10, that's Sagasa, they're running. And they use this uh, rushing, rushing strike, you know, but high, low, low, high uh, type of theory. And then <clears throat> thrust low, thrust high, and then do by the other side the same way, you know. Then uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, all of those designed for the close range. It's very, very uh, simple, you know, from five, six, seven, eight, 
nine strike up to nine and the uh, location of the strike is really uh, determined you know from low high high low and then high high you know that is you learn the abanico and uh, redondo in the same you learn the abanico close range close range abanico and as redondo close range on the because this is close range uh, and then the bridge it's uh, teaching you how to from the distance how to shut your opponent by going to the center line <clears throat> stop him and then cut him to the low strike and then go back up high low again and slash as you go in out it means you're going in very strong attacking him inside and then going out attacking your opponent as you go out so very very nice oh well done you know very nice arrangement again this art is arranged and i've been taught you know arranged in 1700 in poetic so only few master that retain the one to 30. in fact that's one of the problem when i was uh, seeking lesson to uh, <clears throat> old maestro of the battalion i went to several town you know seeking because there's a, a moromoro group in pakil moromoro group uh, in uh, Siniluan Laguna, Lumban, Magdalena, Cabinte, Mahayhay, Luciana, even up far as uh, Bae, you know, right the town of Bae. <clears throat> I went over there and asked around, meet all of those uh, Moro Moro player and ask them their battalion. And surprising, they only, uh, there's up, they're practicing up to one to five only battalion in different town and separate or different uh, arrangement already from what I've been practicing. But, <clears throat> you know, I'm still interested to learn. That's why I, I came back and learned their battalions. I just want to see what is the pair, what is the difference as of battalions and things. So <clears throat> I realized that I'm fortunate to learn from Maestro Luciano uh, uh, Hagayat that he has all the, the theory. My dad only know one to five because he left the town after the war and my grandfather taught him one to five. My grandfather knows one to 30, but my grandfather is um, at the time of the war is just healing up from uh, the wound that he got from his last uh, uh, death match before the war. So <clears throat> it's kind of limit him to show my dad and my uncle all of the Moromoro uh, Battalion. So he urged my dad to learn from <clears throat> two particular maestros that he pointed out. <clears throat> Maestro Luciano and Maestro Gabriel, Gabriel Baisas, you know, and my dad learned from Maestro Gabriel, but not the Moromoro. He learned the Siete Palo or Siete Stilo that uh, they practice, the family arts of Baisas. <clears throat> and my, my dad learned from uh, other maestro besides him, and he never really learned from Maestro Luciano, because Maestro Tanoy, that is Luciano, Maestro Tanoy used to live in the mountain after the war, and then my dad has a hard time reaching to him. Yeah, so my dad, plus my dad, uh, trouble. So he lost a chance. But because uh, we live very close to uh, Maestro Luciano in, Lagu in Paete, you know, actually, we're in the same barrio. I'm a best friend of uh, his uh, granddaughter. I got an opportunity to ask him if he could teach me. And for several years, he said he don't teach anymore. He stopped teaching. He don't want to teach the art, you know? So he, like, he decided to die it with him. But when 
probably saw me with the granddaughter. That's the time he changed his mind. He realized that I am serious about learning. At the same time, he has an interior motive when he asked me if I want to learn. Because he thought I'm courting his granddaughter. <laughs> hey, you know, what, what can I do? You know, when you're handsome, you're handsome. <laughs> I'm not courting his granddaughter. I am very close to her. That's all. You know, in fact, I'm very close to her too, granddaughter. But that's what, that's what the trigger of him asking me if I'm still interested. And that's what happened. He asked me and I learned it. I learned the 1 to 30. And I'm not, I'm gonna reserve the 21 to 30 for me. I already share you the meaning of 1 to 20. The same thing as I, I did to my student. I'm sharing them to 1 to 30, but only those reach the higher level in the Garemo Darnese. If you have not reached the higher level, you would never see the 21 to 30. Yeah, because that is reserved to the higher practitioner. You know, I would like to keep that as like that. Even I urge all of my senior students to keep it that way. Don't just give it away. They can give it to one to 10, to one to 15, or even one to 20. If they can, if they can absorb it, give it to them. But hold the 21 to 30. Because if any one of them turn around and bite me in the back, they will see what is missing. Okay, they will see what is missing. You gotta reserve some for yourself. All right? Anyway, I did, instead of one mile, I did one mile and a half talk. <laughs> I, I just want to complete the Larong Moromoro or the Batalia talk, okay? Batalia is the original art. I can call it the mother art of the Arnis de Mano. And Escrima is actually a Filipino adaptation from the Spanish Esgrima. <laughs> so those is just adapted name. Yeah, Arnis de Mano is really coined inside Larong Moromoro. Okay, from the colorful trappings that we use on our show. I call this our show because I am a Moromoro player too, together with the granddaughters of Maestro Luciano Cagayat. His son, all of, her, of his granddaughters, all Moromoro player. He played king. And the, daughter, the granddaughters play a princess. Oh, they're all beautiful granddaughters. And the father of, and the uncle has also played prince in the show, including my, you know, my uncle also, Guyo. So we are right there. We are all player of La Romoromoro. That's why I can talk about it. There's, there's no uh, book of La Romoromoro ever written talk about this like my book so if you have any comment question buy my book and you will see what more more is about okay anyway I'll stop now because it's way 30 minutes long of this talk too much all right this is Gatpuno Abon saying goodbye to you all love you bye bye